Hi everybody, I'm Mrs. Gobani and I'm going to walk you through a brief lecture about state changes. In this PowerPoint, we are going to be answering the essential question, how can one state of matter transform into another state of matter? Along with the screencast, you'll want to access the notes sheets. You can complete either a digital copy or a hard copy of the notes. Um, looking through this sheet prior to watching the entire screencast is going to help you so that you tune in to certain information that you'll want to write down on that note sheet. To recap some of the learning that you've done so far, there are three states of matter that we have been discussing, solids, liquids, and gases. Yes, there are other states of matter as well, like plasma, for example, but our class in eighth grade, we've been focusing on these three. Solids, liquids, and gases are made of particles, and those particles can be arranged differently based on the state of matter that the particles are in. For example, solids have a very specific arrangement. They have a pattern to them and the particles are very close together. They're tightly bonded, um, chemically interacting with one another. A liquid is different because the particles, while still close together, are able to move freely around one another, and they take the shape of their container. A gas uh, has the least interaction between the particles because they're spread so far apart. They take the shape of their container as well, and um, they really don't interact with one another as much as a solid and a liquid does. It does not matter whether the particles are arranged in a solid, a liquid, or a gas. The particles are always in motion. These three animations really show you the difference in how the particles are moving. Um, in a solid, the particles are bonded so close together and they're very tightly packed that they're only able to vibrate slightly. In a liquid, the particles, again, are more free to move. They are bonded to one another, but the bonding is loose and transient. They bond and move again and interact and spread apart. In a gas, the particles are moving very quickly and they really don't interact with one another very much because the particles are so spread apart from one another. It's energy that makes particles move. The more energy that particles have, the faster they move. The less energy they have, the slower that they move. Adding energy to a solid, a liquid, or a gas makes the particles of that substance move faster. Taking away energy does the opposite. Here's another look at it. Um, when you have particles that are cooled, the particles do not have as much heat energy, and so they don't move as fast, and they don't uh, move away from one another. They stay close together. When particles are hot, those particles have a lot of energy. As you can see in the animation, they're moving around quickly, and they're able to spread away from one another more easily. It's adding energy that causes the particles to change and rearrange, and that's how we get state changes. When you start with a solid and you add energy to it, it can change into a liquid, adding more energy changes it into a gas, and so on and so forth. And we can go backwards as well. When we have a gas and we take away energy, the particles are going to move slower and they'll move closer together, forming a liquid. Removing more energy causes them to change back into a solid. I want to quickly skip over to this simulation. This is simulation number one that some students are doing as an option for this. It's a really good thing to look at. It reviews the different states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. I can go through and pour each of these. If I pour a solid, I see that it maintains its specific arrangement. I can see the particles are still in motion. If I pour a liquid, the particles are moving more freely. They spread out and try and spread to fill up the container on the floor. And then a gas, of course, has to be covered. The particles are moving rapidly. They move away from one another. They spread apart. They don't interact as much. If we go to heat, <clears throat> we are able to look at the different state changes that happen. So as I heat this ice, it changes from a solid to a liquid. The particles move faster. Now the particles are being heated again. These liquid particles, I'm starting to see some bubbles form as the liquid's going to start changing into a gas. As those particles gain more and more energy, they're able to move faster, and they're going to overcome those bonds that they had with one another. And finally, they're going to completely change into a gas and another state change is going to occur. I highly recommend looking at simulation number one along with this screencast and stepping through each of these state changes after you've reviewed things with me. 
state changes are about solids, liquids, and gases transforming into one another with the gain or loss of energy. Melting is one state change that happens when a solid changes into a liquid as it gains energy. Freezing is the opposite of melting. It's when a liquid loses energy and changes back into a solid. Those particles move slower and bonds can form again. Vaporization is also known as boiling or evaporation. More than likely, we'll use that term evaporation a lot, especially in our water unit. It's when a liquid gains energy and changes into a gas. The particles move fast enough to overcome their interactions with one another in the liquid phase. Condensation is the opposite of evaporation or vaporization. It's when a gas loses energy and changes back into a liquid. The particles slow back down and those bonds can reform. We've covered two uh, parts of this triangle here, condensation, evaporation, melting, and freezing. But there are cases where a solid can change into a gas and a gas can change back into a solid. So we're going to give some terms to that as well. Sublimation is when a solid gains enough energy to immediately become a gas, completely bypassing the liquid stage. The best example of this, obviously, is dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide. The solid carbon dioxide completely sublimates and becomes a gas and gives those cool effects at parties and concerts and things. Deposition is the opposite of sublimation. It's when a gas loses enough energy to completely transform into a solid, again, bypassing the liquid stage. A good example of this is when we had those really, really cold days a few years ago. People took boiling water, that gas, threw it off the ledge just like this man is doing in the video, and it changed completely back into snow, which is the solid state. We've completed this triangle now, um, identifying each of the states of matter and how they change. Some things to keep in mind. State changes are caused by energy gain or loss. When particles gain energy, they move faster. When they lose energy, they move slower and closer together. Particle arrangement and volume changes with energy gain and loss as well. When particles gain energy, they spread apart and uh, they, they lose their patterns and bonds break. When particles lose energy, they move closer together. Um, there's more order to the particles and more bonds form. And that there are special names for each state of matter. You're going to be responsible for knowing vaporization, condensation, sublimation, deposition, freezing, and melting. If you want to pause this, it's going to help you a lot with that notes sheet that you're filling out. Now that our screencast is complete, you'll want to make sure that you go through and complete this note sheet, either digital or on hard copy, um, and that things make sense to you. Pairing the screencast with some of the other options, some of the other simulations, is a really good idea to fully understand state changes. And of course, please make sure that you ask questions if you have them. The goal of all this work that we're doing is to not rush through it to get it done. It's more about trying to learn and understand um, particles, particle movement, states of matter. Thanks.